We're going to start at the beginning. We're going to talk to pre-trip. We're going to get ready. We're going to talk about the fuel. We're going to talk how much you take on. We'll talk about two different styles of boat you run. And we're going to go with it. In the course of doing it, I may cut you off. I may stop you. I don't have thin skin. Okay? okay. You know how I am. And, and if we need to get to another thing, I want you to get as much out of this as you can. Okay? We good? Everybody good? good. Everybody's got their drink. Here we go. Okay. As far as going on a fishing trip, we're going to decide to go tuna fishing. Mark, give me the best months beginning to end. When am I going? The problem. We're going here to Bimini. Well, let's just say in this particular instance, you're going off of Lukaya. You're going to Bimini. You're going to the Northwest Channel, which is how many miles? 75 miles to West End, roughly. You know, and Lukaya is 90. Okay, and we're going here. what months? Um, we typically will concentrate between Memorial Day and Labor Day. Okay, what months is that? The end of May yeah. to the end of August. May, June, July, August. So we got actually four months to catch a tuna. Yep. Okay. You can go earlier. They're there earlier. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, May's windy. can be a little rough still. Um, we wait for it to settle down. May, June, July, and August. Yep. You agree? I, I fish a month earlier and a month later, but whenever the weather's right. Okay. We're going to talk. From April till September. All right, so is, this a, is the moon a factor in your decision to go? Not typically. I definitely see that the bite is better on no moon, but if the weather's right and there's a full moon, I'm still going to go. So, and I've, I've had amazing trips with a moon, and I've had trips that were horrible with it. You just got to go. Just got to go. <laughs> That's what I say. Okay, so we're going next Friday. The moon is what it is. Seems to be okay. Now, when you say it looks promising, does the barometer have anything to do with the fishing? Not for tuna for me, because it's summertime fishing and we don't have a lot of big barometer changes. Does the tide have anything to do with the tuna? I would say no. You would say no. The reason I ask that even, which is, which is interesting about tide, okay? Talk to some of the guys that are golden tile fishermen out here. Believe that the tide has everything to do with it 14 miles offshore. Let, let me correct that just a little okay. bit. It depends on where you're fishing. If you're fishing on a point, say if you're fishing at Dutch Bar, or if you're fishing at Hole in the Wall, the tide definitely affects it. But if I'm out in the middle of the channel, I don't see a big difference. Here, so here it's a, it, it doesn't affect it, but on a point it does. Correct. When you say at a point, anywhere there, there, there's an outlet or there's water flowing like Boca Inlet or Hillsborough Inlet where the nutrients are coming out, it does matter. Where we're talking about here, off the islands, it probably doesn't matter as much. Correct. Yes? Wind. Talk about wind, Mark. What wind is the most favorable wind if you had to pick one? Uh, an east wind, but we've caught them on a west wind. Unlike here where the bite turns off on a west wind, um, I've noticed that on a west wind, the fish are generally in a different location than they are on an east wind. So pick it, east or west. That's uh, I mean, complete I, I, I'm indifferent. So for riding so purposes, so, for getting correct. over there comfortably, correct. I prefer an east wind because your current is coming this way. On a west wind, the channel is like the Gulf Stream on a north wind. Okay. So if the west wind kicks up to over 10 to 15 knots, it gets sloppy over there. Correct. So west wind running back is always a pain. Yeah. Okay. So it's just it's like sword fishing or anything out here. Yeah. If you got to run back with a west wind, it's always difficult because it's rough. Um, I'm picking that day, Tristan. I really want to go next Friday. What's going to make you not go other than sea height? Why wouldn't you go? Why wouldn't I go? If the weather's right and I have bait, I'm going fishing. So, so okay, let me, let me re-preface <laughs> that. If you said to me, I'm going to go sword fishing tomorrow. I would tell you that there's an unstable barometer and it will probably be very slow. You should probably save your money. Again, I'll bring it back to the point of, you know, we're summertime fishing in the majority here and you don't see a lot of big barometer swings in the summertime. Okay, so those, those storms in the afternoon don't make a difference that you, if you know that's <coughs> going to happen as far as barometers. None Correct. Of that. Not, Does it not affect really. it like other fish? Not to where I would, would schedule my trip around it. If I see that the fish aren't biting when I'm underneath of a storm, well, then I'm going to move to where the storm's not at. And typically you are fishing where the storm isn't because to find these fish, you can't find them in the rain. Right, okay. 
We're going to go into birds later. We'll talk about birds and rain too. Remind me of that one. Right. Um, let's talk first. What do you fish out of? Have you taken small boats, big boats? What's your? If you had a choice, what would you take? I like fishing on the big boat. Big boat. Because I'm up higher. Boat? I fish on a 61 Viking, and I'm up high. I can see. We have a big radar. I, I can find the fish easy. I'm used to all my electronics on the boat. Have um, you caught them in a small boat? Absolutely. What's a small boat? <laughs> I've caught them in 16 foot open fishermen out of Harbor Run, Island. Running out of there. Yeah, running out of Harbor Island. Let's say we're close here and we want to fish here. Let's kind of preface those, some of the questions with being over here. Let's say we want to go across from Boca or Hillsboro or Boynton. So have you, have you fished a small boat? Absolutely. Okay, yeah, and you're fishing out of? A 39 yellowfin. 39 yellowfin. Okay, and that's what you've caught them out of most of the time you fish. Well, I had a 36 before. 36, so you're, you're spending a lot of money to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Sure am. laughs> yeah. So, so the fuel for your trip, let's just say, you, what do you generally do, Mark? You go? I hold 550 gallons. My goal is to not fill up with any Bahamian gas. So. <laughs> Great point. Um, I will typically run between 250 miles and 300 miles on a two-day trip. And I will burn 400 gallons of fuel doing that. So I've got enough to make the whole trip without having to fill up in the Bahamas. Okay, so for, uh, you're, you're burning. And on the other coin of that, I'll burn 1,200 in that right, same right. amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so we got. So you're going to pick your big boat. You're obviously sticking with a small boat because you're comfortable with it. Yep. Oh. All right, so we've picked that day. Am I missing anything about the day that I'm looking for? Am I, is there something that I'm not asking you about picking a day? Because most people can't pick Wednesday. They're going to pick the weekend, and the weather's going to be what it is. So what you're saying is kind of just go for it. It'll be what it is between those. You chose well, six months. He's at four. Well, to me, the biggest choice is if I have my choice, I want a flat, calm day. Okay, flat, calm. So I can see them. That's it. Nice That's weather. That's it. You Beautiful, nice flat, weather. glass weather if okay. I had my absolute choice. All right. The only other thing I'll add to that is I will look at some different weather sites and see if there's going to be cloud cover. And that will get into discussion later on middle of the daytime bites if it's very, very clear versus if there's some cloud cover. Okay, saying that, where do you see that? Uh, in, like IntelliCast has a weather site. In, IntelliCast, so you can see the cloud cover. It'll give you a forecast of 50% cloud cover, 20%, 80%. And it's made a difference to you? Well, I mean, it makes You'd a difference. Be clear. No, I'd actually rather be cloudy because you can fish all day long. When it's cloudy? Yes. Huge information. Yeah. Okay, so cloudy days you feel all... You cloudy know, days you can just go all day long. How do you feel about that? Is he right? It doesn't matter to me. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> now, when we decide to go over there, whether we got a cloudy day or a sunny day, are you fishing a certain time and stopping? Are you fishing all day? Talk to me about hours of fishing. Typically, what we like to do on our boat is we don't leave the dock till about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And I'll from fish from 4 until 8. This is from the Bahamas. From there. Okay, so afternoon. If Late. we leave here, we leave about noon. So you don't fish in the morning, you fish till the We fish afternoons. But, you know, that changes. If you hear the fish are bite, we've seen the fish bite in the middle of the day, and you won't catch them in the morning or the afternoon. So seen them bite in the morning. But if I had to pick one time, it would be the afternoon. We roll all day here regardless. Doesn't matter. You're fishing for tuna all The day. cloud coverage has no impact whether I go and fish all day or not. I just prefer cloud coverage. If it's clear as a bell, we're still fishing all day long. All right. We'll leave here at 5.30 in the morning, catch some bait, check in by 8 o'clock. As soon as we pull out of West End, we're not into Lakai until after dark. So we're at it all day long. So it's an all day event. Yeah. I want you to talk to me. In this room, how many people have small boats? 30 feet and 40 feet and under. Okay, most people have small. We're going to talk about big, but I want to start with you, and I want to talk about the setup of your boat. 